Buddy, say hello, Don. Hello, everyone. I'm done with this live crap. Sorry. <laughs> we tried it twice. I'm a rotary phone girl. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> so Dawn and I met because she moved next door, and she started, she had a dream of using our tabernacle, which is an amazing, amazing stage, for something very useful. What would that be? The Mount Tabor Arts Collaborative. We were running a non-for-profit when I lived in um, Hudson County, who is the West Hudson Council for the Arts. And then when we came up here, I said, well, why are we not doing it up here? So now we've renamed the company and it's a non-for-profit Mount Tabor Arts Collaborative. Awesome. And what was your initial goal and how has it like sprung from there? And how has it, has it gotten, was, is your, was your reality today bigger than you dreamed or of what you expected or? Um, I think really what we wanted to do was in inspire the community of Parsippany and Denville and all of Morris County, uh, obviously. Um, but I think we, we, what I really want to do, I mean, I think we're doing what we want to do, but I want adults to get back to what lit them up when they were kids. So if you loved to paint, you need to come take a painting class or paint a mural with us. Or if you, Alicia took a class, we did a cabaret workshop. She always wanted to sing in cabaret. We did a cabaret workshop with a realtor, uh, insurance broker, uh, makeup, artist. makeup artist. So, but this was something they always wanted to do. So we had guest teachers come in and I taught and then they got to perform in New York. So That's it was fun. really cool. It was a lot of fun. It was definitely a dream come true. Because it was in New York City, like actually, yes. actually New York City. Don't tell mamas, it was phenomenal. So what is your, what is your, um, so do, has it met your expectations then? Or has it gone no, wrong? absolutely. Okay. Absolutely, it has. Okay. I mean, we can only grow from here, but I, you know, I just, I want to grow and grow the summer camp. I would like to grow the audiences for our Broadway benefit and our other concerts that we do at the Tabernacle. So tell us a little bit about your background. So what did, was you always... Like, where did you start? So I started out as a wee three-year-old dancer. I hate that you're behind me. Oh, it's so, so weird. Sorry. It's okay. Um, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. It's like, Alicia on your shoulder. <laughs> um, anyway, so I started out as a dancer. I was always a dancer. I went to, I went to Montclair State College. Now it's a university. So I'm old. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, but I always wanted to act. I mean, I was acting in high school, but when I got to college. Did you, did you have leads in, college, in high school? Well, I, they didn't really have a really good theater program where I went to high school. Um, in fact, we were the only people who did like shows there and I don't think they did shows after that. Um, so in college, I auditioned, it was very weird at Montclair State then. They wanted the dancers to stay with the dancers and the theater people to stay with the theater people, which I said, this is crazy. The music department, the theater department, the dance department should all be married. It's ridiculous. So yeah, so they kind of looked down on dancers that auditioned for the musicals. And I don't know, it was a little bit weird, but now I, I think it's different. I think they right. finally married everything which it should be that i mean the arts of the arts so how did you like go over into broadway because you were working with broadway um well so i mean i i did a ton of summer stock i did a ton of non-equity tours and then i was actually a friend of mine was going to do funny girl uh with carolee carmella but then she ended up not doing it they they had debbie gibson do it um Everybody know Debbie? Yes, but she, but she, uh, it was when she wanted to be called Deborah. So oh, now she's yeah. Deborah Gibson because yeah. she's older now. Yes, Who wants to be, you know, a teeny bopper? She's not anymore. Yep. Um, so anyway, my friend said, "Can you come and ha uh, help with the auditions? Because he doesn't tap. He's brilliant, but he doesn't tap. Right. So I assisted him at the auditions, and then I was helping him with casting. And then when I said who are you getting for the swing? Because it's a huge role because you have to, they Which have this? funny girl. Okay. They have to understudy character actors as well as the, the folly girls. And he pulled my resume out of the 
pile, which like I was shocked because I didn't really even know I was auditioning. But so there you go. <laughs> and then I was the I was also the dance captain for that tour. I didn't really like swinging. It's a lot of anxiety. Mm -hmm. Like somebody could pass out in the middle of the show and you're on. Oof. Dawn Ward to the stage manager's desk. Yeah, I didn't like hearing that. <laughs> but so, you did it. I did do it. But it, I mean, I learned a lot from it about how to think on my feet, but it was quite stressful. I could never do it now, not this age. Younger, yes. Now, not so much. So how did you get into the national tour of hair? Um, that actually, my friend said, you need to go audition for this international tour that's going to open in Germany. They already had hair one out, and this was another. I mean, it was crazy there. We had groupies and everything. But it was kind of like a dare. My friend said, just go to the audition. And I didn't really want to go to the audition, but I did. And then um, I, it was very strange because Jim Rado, when I went in, he wrote hair. Um, he said, oh, you have, you have this garland type voice and I said well I usually get Liza but I'll take Garland any day so he had wanted me to do the opening of Act 2 um, as Judy Garland and so he kept having me sing Over the Rainbow even though that's not in there but he wanted to you know have that sense of Judy Garland so then I got over there they cast me I got over there and the music director goes we're not doing that so then I'm, I'm there and I ended up playing Drunk Dad 3. Very well, I might add. Drunk Dad? Drunk Dad 3. Like a daddy? Dad. Like there's three moms and three dads and I was Drunk Dad 3. Okay. It was fun. Okay. <laughs> I stole the show. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So tell us what you've got going on this summer. So this summer, um, so in May 19th, the Broadway Benefit, uh, 7 p.m. in the Tabernacle. We have some really amazing Broadway performers coming. Stanley Wayne Mathis from, he was in Lion King. He was in You're the Man, Charlie Brown, Book of Mormon. He's actually on Rise now. He, um, he'll he be here again. He was here last summer. Um, who else? Oh, actually, my friend Michelle McConnell, who I did uh, Man of La Mancha with many moons ago. She's the longest running Carlotta in Phantom. And she's coming. Um, and some of my former students who are like in the business now, who are amazing, Jackie Nuzo, um, who else? Oh, Rose Padone Maloney. She actually is not my student, but I taught with her for many years. Your head off. Hold on. Oh, that's okay. I can just, so, um, yeah. So basically we bring Broadway to the mountain, Broadway in your backyard. Um, it's a 7 p.m. show. You can get tickets on our website, www.mt, not Mount we'll Spelled. Put it at the bottom of the okay, MountTaborArts.org. Um, all proceeds from the benefit concert go to our summer camp, which we're doing in July, which is Lion King Jr. Um, but there's another concert in the middle. Uh, if you love jazz, if your father loves jazz, if your mother loves jazz. Uh, Danielle Alario Trio will be in the Tabernacle June 16th at 7 p.m. She's a former student, and she, I mean, I knew at age eight, nine, when I taught her that she was going places. She is amazing. Um, she's very eclectic. She's going to have her CDs there, Peach, that she's selling. Um, so that's, that's a good Father's Day gift because it's the day before Father's Day. Then our mask and puppet workshop. Uh, will be June, the last week of June, June 25th through the 29th. It's half day, 12 to 5. Um, you'll be working with my husband, Jim Lau, who's a local artist, and Jen Roth, who's a local artist, and my friend Vito Lianza. We're going to give him a, we're going to give him a, one of these calls, which I hope works because I hate the lives. Um, he uh, works uh, in Atlanta, the Jim Henson, well, it's not actually a Jim Henson Museum because I don't think the museum is in Atlanta, but it's like the Center for Puppetry Arts, I believe. But he he refurbished all of uh, Jim Henson's puppets. Oh. So he'll be chatting with us and we'll be, we'll be creating the masks and the puppets for Lion King Jr. Okay. Yes. Wow. And then um, the camp, the camp uh, is July 9th through July 20th. It's Monday through Friday. We have full day nine to five, half day 12 to five. So if you go to Mount Tabor, um, 
music camp, band camp, you can, the band camp, you can come and do some musical afterwards. Yes, that's why we did that. And then our show is on the 21st at 7 p.m. It's awesome. And last year's show was incredible. We were floored at how the kids were able to put together something so professional, so amazing. I saw Susicle this year. I won't say which high school, and it didn't even compare. The energy, the music, the dancing, it's everything. And the kids get an experience of everything. And that's what I love about it. They get to see behind the scenes, right? Yes, we had um, what we called uh, drop-in and paint, uh, or I called it Zen painting, um, <laughs> where children would come and would be mentored by art. Uh, well, they were art teachers, instructors during the year at uh, well-known schools around here and they would mentor them and they would help paint our set um, People were helping with lighting people were helping with props. Yeah, I have, um, actually have the set here. Keep going. <laughs> she has the set oh, I saw, like, but, oh. like, It was so magical. I couldn't it really was magical it. because what my husband ended up doing The children would, children would come into panels in the go. morning. Oh, look at my background <laughs> they would come in to like this, but not painted in. It would just have little dots on it, like color by numbers, maybe. I don't know. Amazing. Um, and and so then the children, painted. and then the children would paint the panels that he had, and the next day they would come in and they would do something else. When they came in opening night and all the panels were put together, because it was like a big puzzle. Yeah, there's another one. Maybe. They whoa! Oh, they were blown away. The kids were blown away because they went, oh, I worked on that, that tree or that fish. Yeah. And then they saw how the, the whole um, thing came together. Yeah. And Tom was like, I'm going to throw these out. I'm like, no! <laughs> I had to have They them. are artwork, so they I guess are. in a way it's, it's like you don't I've want to throw them out. Things with them, but I just, it really literally was magical. And I tell you, and I told Dawn, and, and I was not getting what I told her. Some days when I'm feeling blue, I turn on my very stolen things that I've taken and I love watching it. <laughs> I love it. It's so gorgeous. It's so magical. It makes me so happy. And to see your kid on stage is amazing. And then to see them actually do this in two weeks is unbelievable. Because a lot of times, high schools and, and grammar schools, when they do a play, how long do they go? Months. For it's months. months. They start like in January months. and don't go until maybe April. Months. And this, I mean, it, it really is intense. Uh, but we make it fun. It, it is. Um, the children in the morning that come we do a we do a lot more improvisation with them and really character building they will start learning choreography and blocking in the morning and then we revisit it in the afternoon when the new children come in um the really cool thing about lion king jr is they have in the kit that gets sent to you when you um when you pay for the royalties they give you this huge binder that says the lion king experience and it actually is lesson plans Wow. For like to to build the character, so you're not just okay. Here's your script. Let's go. You're actually doing what you would do in an acting class. Um, I mean, I did that last year for Susical. I made my own lesson plans in the morning. But now I, with the Lion King experience, we can use the materials they've given us. Yeah, and especially fabulous. if your if your kid is like really serious, like my Viana is, she rocks the house, and everybody always talks about how awesome she is. And a lot of that experience. You know, it's from her own heart, but also came from direction by Dawn. So it's... Because a lot of times in schools, you have to remember, if they're, if they're not an actress or they're just the English teacher, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing, they're not getting the direction they would get from a professional. Um, you know, we really talk about how important it is that we're all on the same foot, and it might be, that might be ridiculous, but I told him, even a step touch, if you're off like a smidge, we're going to see that. And that they worked so hard on little tiny intricate things. And I was blown away opening night because um, they were focused. They went home after camp. Sweating 90 degrees yes. on the stage. Yes. Yeah. So amazing. they went home afterwards and they did the work. So your, your camp day doesn't end at five because you need to go home and you need to work on what you worked on during the day. So that's why I say it's intense. So it's not like, you know, you can go home and have your dinner and then go to a movie. Like you have to do the work and they did the work and that's why they were so successful was, in what they did. Because it is two weeks, but it's, if you think it's, you're off on the weekend. So it's 10 days. They did this in 10 days and I, 
I was nervous. It's hard. It's a, it's a hard thing to do, but if you're focused and you know, this is why you do a theater camp. If you want to go fishing or play a sport, you go to a different type of camp, but this type of camp, you're going to learn about work ethic. Mm -hmm. You're going to work, uh, learn about, um, making new friends because maybe you don't know half the people in the, so just like a regular camp where you make new friends, this theater people bond so quickly. Mm -hmm. Like I have friends that I've had since the eighties because you know, we lived on a bus together. <laughs> you guys have a yeah. whole different experience. <laughs> right, we're gonna come. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not go that far. <laughs> that, that was crazy, but that's okay. So anything else you want to add about what you have? What is your, what is your future? What are your future endeavors? Do you, what's your, what are your, what are your future endeavors for Mount Tabor Arts Collaborative? Well, I think we want to offer some more classes. Mm -hmm. I know we've been really trying to get um, a stained glass class together. Mm -hmm. And actually through Morris Arts, I was at their showcase and there were two stained glass artists there. So I'm going to reach out to them to see if we can get them up here. Um, you know, even, the people in Mount Tabor, we have um, amazing artists that live on this mountain. It's crazy. Um, so we want to maybe have some of them teach a class. Uh, we want to do more outreach class-wise and then, or maybe do like a one-act festival. I mean, there's so many other things that I want to do, but we need to just keep slow and steady wins the race. Amen. We'll just keep growing and growing each year. So we're going to have information underneath this interview uh, with every, how you can reach the website, how you can reach Dawn. If you're a teacher and you want to, you want to offer something, is there anybody specific that you're looking for, Dawn? Uh, you mean for the, for, for the summer? For, on the teaching side? Or the oh, teaching side. side. Teaching side, I think we're okay now, but we always, um, we always take resume. Right now we're volunteer based only. It's pro bono. So we're all just putting the time in to inspire these children. Sure. So if, if you're a teacher who wants to do that and would love to volunteer your time, whether it be uh, if you're a costumer and want to help be a seamstress for us, we're building all the costumes this year. Or if you're an artist and you want to help mentor some of these children that are coming in to do backstage work, we would love to have you. You can send your information or your questions to taborarts at AOL.com. Um, yeah. Children. What are the age of the children? Children for the the mask and puppet are uh, ages 10 to 18, just because we're going to be working with materials and things that I think like a seven-year-old probably and couldn't Lion King? Lion King is seven. So we're taking resumes for uh, assistance for me, and that would be like a 17 and 18-year-old high school student to come in and assist, like if I'm working with another actor, maybe you're gonna come in and work a scene. Uh, I have, I already have a choreographer's assistant, Juliana Martina will be coming back, yay, Juliana. Um, but yeah, so if you're a 17, a 17 or 18 year old theater student or you love the theater, send me an email and let's talk about it. Um, and then the children in the actual camp are seven, to six, 16, seven, 16. Seven to 16. All right, that was, that's awesome. I think it's great. We've got some great information. If you need to contact on, I will have the uh, contact information below and that's it. <laughs> Ciao, right, Bella. Bye. Bye. Bye.